Welcome to lesson six of the GEMS training. In this lesson, we will familiarize the user with more advanced commands in GAMS. In particular, the user will learn how to use conditional expressions and how to use programming flow control features. First, we will give an overview of conditional expression and their usage. Conditional expressions can be very useful both in assignment statements and in equations. For example, if you wanted to impose import duties only on commodities that compete with commodities produced locally, or set income tax rates based on personal income brackets, or determine a wage rate contingent on the level of university degree obtained, and so on. One way to express a condition is to use the dollar sign followed by a logical condition. If the logical condition is satisfied or true, then the operation is executed. For example, the expression means that the assignment A equal to occurs only if B is greater than 1.5. So the syntax for introducing a condition is as follows. First, the term followed by the dollar sign, followed by the logical expression. Which means, consider this term only if this condition is true. Conditions can appear either on the right hand or on the left hand side of statements and equations. When the condition is on the left, the assignment is executed only if the condition is satisfied. For example, if we have the assignment equal to is executed if B is greater than 1.5. If the expression in parentheses is not true, A will keep its previous value or will be set to zero if no prior assignment has been made. When the condition is on the right, the assignment is always executed, but the value assigned will depend on whether the condition is satisfied or not. For example, this expression means that A is set to 2 if B is greater than 1.5, A is equal to 0 otherwise. To better illustrate the use of the dollar condition on the left and on the right, Consider the following example where we want to express if B is greater than 1.5, then A is equal to 2, else it is equal to 5. In GAMS, we can write this condition in different ways. Using dollar condition on the left, we can write this assignment sets A to 2 if B is greater than 1.5, this assignment sets A to 5 otherwise, or if B is less or equal to 1.5. Of course, only one of these conditions can be true. We can also write, first, a simple assignment setting A to 5, and a second assignment that changes A to 2 if B is greater than 1.5. Finally, we can write, a simple assignment that sets A to 2, followed by an assignment that changes the value of A to 5 if B is less than or equal to 1.5. All three writings are equivalent in GAMS. We can also write the previous expression by using the dollar condition on the right. This expression says, if B is greater than 1.5, then this condition is true, and so this portion of the assignment equals 2. But this condition is false, and so this portion of the assignment equals 0, giving a sum of 2. If B is not greater than 1.5, this condition is false, and so this portion of the assignment equals zero. 
but this condition is true, and so this portion of the assignments equals 5, giving a sum of 5. If a numeral expression is used as a logical condition, a result of 0 is considered false, and all non-zero results are considered true. For example, the numeral condition x minus 5 is only true if x is not equal to 5, and the condition x is only verified if x is different from 0. Here are the numerical relationship operators that can be used in logical expressions. Strictly less than can be expressed by LT or the sign less than. The less than or equal to can be expressed by LE or the sign less or equal. The equal sign can be expressed by EQ or the equal sign, and so on. You can combine conditions using the AND operand between conditions. This means that all conditions linked by AND must be satisfied. For example, in the following expression, both conditions, B greater than 1.5 and C greater than 3, must be satisfied for A to be equal to 2. More generally, we can build a conditional table for the possible combinations. Only one instance gives the result to. Using the OR operand between conditions, this means that at least one condition must be satisfied. For example, in this expression, at least one condition must be true. Either B must be greater than 1.5, or C greater than 3, or both, for A to be equal to 2. More generally, we can build a conditional table showing all the possible combinations. Only when both conditions are false does A take the value 0. Finally, using the XOR operand between conditions, this means that one and only one condition must be satisfied. For example, in this expression, if B is greater than 1.5, then C must not be greater than 3 for A to be equal to 2, and vice versa. More generally, we can build a conditional table showing all the possible combinations. Only when both conditions have the same outcome does A take the value 0. It is also possible to use a dollar condition on sets when an action is taken on only selected elements of that set. For example, we define the set I and a subset of I agree. As before, we want to apply a 15% tax only on non-agricultural commodities. In this expression, if the element of I is included in the subset agree, the condition is true and the assignment statement is executed, Tx equals 0. So for wheat, rice, and corn, the condition is true and the tax will be 0. Similarly, in this expression, if the element of T of I is not included in the subset agree, the condition is true and the assignment of 15% is made. So for cars and computers, the condition is true, and the tax will be set to 15%. Conditional assignments can also be used in indexed operations. This may be useful to filter the elements of a set to consider in an operation. For example, you may want to calculate the income from import duties on agricultural commodities. This is expressed by attaching a dollar condition on the main set I, to which the sum operator applies. Note the condition is set right after the set name and before the comma. The dollar condition may also be used to control the domain in indexed operations. For example, where the condition is introduced 
to avoid a division by zero. The division by y can take place only for those elements of y that are not zero. Another instance where conditional assignments in indexed operations are very useful is when aggregating data. Suppose we want to aggregate data on imports into categories corresponding to the user's need. If we use the following nomenclature, we want the detailed list of imports on the left to be aggregated into the two main categories on the right, agriculture and other. In GAMS syntax, you must define two sets and a subset that maps the elements from the two set according to the previous table. So in the first set, I1, commodities are listed according to the given nomenclature, wheat, rice, corn, cars, and computers. In the second set, I, elements are aggregated according to the user's nomenclature, ag, and other. Finally, the subset map establishes the correspondence between the two nomenclatures by mapping elements of I and elements of I1. Note that the elements of I are listed first, followed by the elements of I1, to correspond to the order specified in the subset mapping. For more information on multidimensional sets and mapping, we refer you back to Lesson 5. We now define the parameters IM and IM1. IM are imports expressed according to the user's nomenclature I, an aggregated version of I1. And IM1 are imports expressed in set I1 nomenclature, which describes the given nomenclature of trade data. To aggregate imports expressed in set I1 into imports expressed in terms of set I, we use a conditional sum. So the parameter IMI is equal to the sum over the element of IM1 conditional on the mapping. If you display IM, you can check whether the aggregation is correct. You can verify that IM for agriculture is 55, the sum of agricultural imports, and IM for other is 270, the sum of non-agricultural imports. Before leaving this section, we would like to offer a few tips when using the dollar condition. When using multiple conditions, we recommend using various types of parentheses it will make the expression easier to understand. For example, this writing is easier to read than this writing. Also, display statement after conditional operations are very useful to verify whether conditions were correctly applied, as in the example from the previous slide. A note of caution. Recall that the dollar sign in the first position of a line is used to introduce dollar control options. So the conditional operator dollar cannot appear in the first position of a line. Finally, logical conditions cannot contain variables. We now present tools to control programming flows. We start with the loop and if statements. The loop statement can be used to execute a group of statements for each element of a set. The syntax is as follows. Loop is a GAMS keyword. Like other index operations, the loop statement is enclosed within parentheses or brackets, a semicolon, ends the loop statement. Item in italics are optional. The loop statement can also be used for iterative calculations. 
For example, if we wanted to compute a population index over the period 2014 to 2020, we would first define a set T using the asterisk to signal a sequence between 2014 and 2020. Declare two parameters, both defined over set T. Population, which is the population index, and growth, which is the population growth. We assume the population growth to be constant at 3% throughout the period, and we set the population index at 100 for the first year, 2014. The population index in 2015 will be determined by the value of the index in the preceding period plus population growth. Similarly, the population index in 2016 will be determined by the value of the index in the preceding period, 2015, plus population growth. And so on. In other words, each period is equal to the preceding period plus population growth. We can express this process using a single loop statement. The loop command starts with the first element of the set, t, and iterates up to the last element. So GAMS first replaces t by 2014, the first element of set t, then GAMS replaces t by 2015, and so on, until it reaches the last element of set t. Using the display command, the user can verify that the computation was done properly. You can see that in 2015, the population is 3% greater than 2014. In 2016, it is 3% greater than 2015, and so on. Here are a few examples when you can apply the loop statement. You may want to run different scenarios of the same exact model. You just need to define a set sen, for example, which contains as elements various scenarios. In this instance, two trade regimes, FTA and CET. Next, you include the solve command in the loop statement, and the program trade will run for each scenario. You can also generate an output table using the loop statement. We will cover this in detail in Lesson 7. Some additional comments on the loop statement. A loop command can be performed over multiple sets. In this case, the syntax is as follows. The sets are enclosed within parentheses and separated by a comma. They are followed by the statements that will be executed on each of the sets. A loop command can include multiple statements. For example, in addition to computing a population index, we could also compute a GDP index. Each statement must end with a semicolon and the loop statement also ends with a closing parenthesis and a semicolon. Finally, you cannot make declarations or define equations within a loop. Another tool for flow control is the if statement. It is very similar to the dollar condition. The if statement allows a group of statements to be executed under specific logical conditions. The syntax is as follows. Where items in italics are optional. If, else if, and else are GAMS keywords. Like other index operations, the if statement is enclosed within parentheses or brackets. A semicolon and the if statement. Consider the following example, 
where both parameters pi and qi are equal to minus 1 if parameter f is negative. As we have seen earlier, conditional assignment can be written using the dollar sign. If the condition is true, the assignments are made and p and q are equal to minus 1. But another way to write the same conditional statement is by using the if statement. The logical condition is expressed in the same manner, f less or equal to 0. It is followed by assignment statements that are executed if the condition is true. Each assignment statement ends with a semicolon. If the condition is false, then no assignment is made. As with the loop, the if statement ends with a closing parenthesis and a semicolon. Now consider a situation a bit more complicated, where both parameters p, i, and q, j are equal to minus 1 if parameter f is negative. But if f is greater than 0 and less than 1, then p, i equals 2 and q equals 4. Again, we can use the dollar conditional statement. When f is negative, the statements are identical to the previous slide. But when the condition is not true, we can use multiple conditions to express that when f is greater than 0 but less than 1, p is equal to 2 and q is equal to 4. Or we can use the if statement. The first part is exactly the same as in the previous slide, but now we add an else if statement that tells GAMS what to do if the first condition is false. So if f is greater than 0, in this case, we impose another condition that f must be less than 1. If both statements are false, no assignment is made. Let's complicate things even more and add one more condition to the problem. Pi and Qj are equal to minus 1 if parameter f is negative. If f is greater than 0 but less than 1, then Pi equals 2 and Qj equals 4. And for all other values of f, Pi equals 3 and Qj equals 5. Again, we can use the dollar condition. We just add a final conditional statement to the example from the previous slide. p is equal to 3 and q is equal to 5 when f is greater or equal to 1. Or using the if statement, the first part is exactly the same as in the previous slide. But now we add an else statement that tells GAMS what to do if neither of the previous conditions are true. So if f is greater or equal to 1. Some additional comments on the if statement. As we have seen, the dollar condition may be more suited for simple conditional expressions, while the if statement is preferable for more complex expressions. In the previous example, we have introduced only one else if statement, but there can be as many comments as there are conditions. As with a loop statement, you cannot make declarations or define equations within an if statement. Next, we introduce the while and for statements. The while statement allows a block of statements to be executed as long as a logical condition is satisfied. The syntax is as follows. While is a GAMS keyword. Like other index operations, the while statement is enclosed within parentheses or brackets. A semicolon ends the while statement. Consider the following example. A child enters primary school at age 6 and exits at age 12. 
Each year, the child graduates to the next grade. To compute the grade reached at each age, we use the while command in the following manner. First, we define two scalars or parameters of zero dimension, age and grade. At age 5, the child is not in school, so the initial values for age and grade are 5 and 0, respectively. Each year, the child is one year older and moves to the next grade, so both parameters are increased by 1 at each iteration until it reaches 12. To verify the validity of the statement, a display command is included in the while statement and both parameters are displayed in the list file, giving the values of age and grade at each iteration. The for statement allows a block of statements to be executed iteratively between given values of a scalar. The syntax is as follows. For is a GAMS keyword. Like other index operation, the for statement is enclosed within parentheses or brackets. The semicolon ends the for statement. The scalar name must have been previously defined. The start value is a scalar initial value. And the end value is the value of the scalar for which the for statement should stop. The start and end values are separated by the keyword 2. The increment is the value for which the scalar changes after each iteration until it reaches the end value. By default, it is 1, but if used, it follows the keyword by. We illustrate with an example based on the optimization problem presented in Lesson 5. We want to model an increase in the price of hamburgers at McDonald's and see how it will affect the meal selected by the consumer. More specifically, suppose that the price of hamburgers increases annually by 10 cents for 5 years from a starting point of $1.30. We first declare a scalar P inc, the yearly price increase. Next, we write a for statement with a starting value of the scalar P inc at 0, an ending value at 50 cents, and an increments of 10 cents. The price variable P is now assigned a new value for hamburgers at each iteration. The new value is equal to the starting price $1.30 plus an increase that will vary between 0 and 50 cents in 10 cents increment. Note that since the increase is only on hamburgers, the specific item is addressed by its label and set between quotes. The solve statement is enclosed in the for statement, so the model is solved iteratively for every new price of hamburgers and the solution represents the values of the variables that minimize total cost while satisfying the minimum daily intake of nutrients. We now conclude Lesson 6 of the GAMS training. For your assignment, program the different example presented in this lesson. Use display statements to verify that you obtained the same results.